anyway, uh, worked real hard, and I think we need to stick to the science on this. The science is very clear. The problem is the department doesn't want to deal with the science because there's that problem, you know, that occurs when you get too much marijuana in one spot, right? It's just too much marijuana. You can't have too much marijuana. I don't know why you can't have too much marijuana, but you can't. Right. Apparently, if you get too much marijuana together, it melts down and it causes the China syndrome. I don't know what happens. But the department has simply said a couple of times, it's just too much marijuana. Of course, I think that's bullshit. Uh, it's driven by law enforcement concerns. Uh, those concerns are largely, uh, in my view, uh, ephemeral. They're not based in reality. Um, and I think that, you know, we're, I'm, I'm inviting the ACLU uh, to join me uh, in suing the Department of Health over these regulations if they don't change. And, Thank you for the invitation. And, uh, Are you going to accept? And I'm inviting, and I'm inviting all of you um, to, to help support us. And I think uh, Allison's absolutely right, Dale's right. We all need to be down there uh, on the 25th, and we need to tell them to respect the science and to, you know, follow the, the, uh, the, the notion that Washington voters wanted people protected and they wanted people taken care of. The intent was clearly to take care of folks, and what's happened is we're winding up taking care of law enforcement. And that's not who I'm interested in taking care of. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So, you know, I think we're in a situation where there are plenty of court cases. I'm in court every week somewhere defending a case. The judges throw up all sorts of extra requirements. Now, if you're using medical marijuana, there are a bunch of hurdles. They make up things. Judges make up extra requirements. Prosecutors come up with bizarre theories. They waste your time. They ruin your life. There's a gentleman, Robert, stand up. There's a gentleman right back here named Robert Dalton who's having the wonderful experience of uh, 61 years old, longshoreman, worked his whole life. Does that guy look like a criminal to you guys, by the way? Because Kitsap County thinks he's a bad man. He was caught growing, uh-oh, too much marijuana again. There we have it. And they're trying to take a quarter of a million dollars worth of his property that he worked his whole life for, and they're trying to put him in jail, and they're trying to ruin his life out in Kitsap County. So if anybody wants to come out to Kitsap County on September 8th and watch a trial, come on down, because they're going to be trying to fuck over Robert Dalton right back there. So Douglas Hyatt, he's the kind of person we're going to help. Next up, Mr. Steve Sturridge. Hi, I'm the angry guy. Uh, I've been running Canacare for about four years. Uh, I, I work very closely with Doug, protecting patients' rights. Uh, it seems, however, that I've spent an increasing amount of my time protecting patients not just from law enforcement, but from our governor and from the ACLU. When this whole 6032 thing got launched, uh, we said it was a bad idea. We fought it. We fought it tooth and nail. We demonstrated outside of ACLU's offices and said, do not visit this bill on us. Because contrary to what Dominic said, the 60-day supply definition was in the original bill. There were a couple of good things in there. Of course, they stripped them out right after we testified on behalf of the bill in, in the state senate. Now what we've, what we've always said, we kept asking the ACLU because I sat in Dominic's office at the ACLU, and he goes, well, what's wrong with the plant law? And I explained to him what's wrong with the plant law. I've been asking the ACLU all along, if they, because the rumor was they were supporting the Oregon law, which is six plants, which is what we've just got. We've asked Allison and the ACLU about this. They have denied that they supported a six plant law. I got 1,250 pages of documents from the Department of Health yesterday, yesterday morning. In their analysis, under 24 ounces, it says this is the amount proposed by the ACLU, but not well received by patients at workshops. It, it increases the number of patients that may need to overcome limit with medical evidence. Uh, if the ACLU didn't propose that six plant law, I don't know who did because that's right from, right from the Department of Health's own documents. So I'm getting tired of getting lied to. Douglas and I are going to be screwed because if they implement this six plant law, Almost every patient of ours who grows is now going to be illegal. We have already had two patients have their grows completely cut down in Spokane County because they had more than six plants, and they left a copy of the new proposed law there. That was all they presented as evidence. Of course, it hasn't even passed yet. 
So we are going to have to sue them. Fortunately, in that 1,250 pages of documents, they gave us all the evidence to prove how we can sue them. Um, I don't know how much how this time is going to be broken up, but um, we need to stop this. We need to have everybody in Tumwater at those hearings on August 25th. The governor of the, of the state of Washington <clears throat> is a liar. She says she supports medical marijuana, but on February 12th, when the Department of Health presented their numbers, which was 35 ounces and 100 square foot of canopy, which was very well thought out, very well reasoned, and very well documented now that I have it, um, the governor and turned that over to law enforcement. The law enforcement in the state of Washington squealed like five-year-old little girls at a birthday party, and the process stopped dead in its tracks. And then they started all over again. What did they, and what did they end up with? They ended up just coincidentally enough with what the Department of Health tells us that the ACLU was pushing this whole time. We need to stop this. We're going to have to do it with a lawsuit. Nothing else is going to work. But I resent the ACLU getting involved with the business of patients when they have not represented one single patient's rights in court in Washington State since the law was passed 10 years ago. All right, we're in time. Thank you, Steve. They say that you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Although I had an experiment in my kitchen recently, and I put out some honey and I put out some vinegar, and I killed a lot of flies with vinegar. And, uh, hardly any with the honey. So I don't know. You might be onto something, Steve. Um, so we've heard from all of our panelists, and we're going to go back down the line. We've got uh, about another ten minutes uh, on this panel. We've heard thus far that from, um, are we feeding back here. Are we feeding back. Why are we feeding back? The ACLU is feeding back, that's right. <laughs> when in doubt, we, we, we can finger the culprit. Um, so we, we've heard problems uh, that are coming up with the Department of Health's initial suggestions that there's not enough dried marijuana, that we don't want a pl plant count, or there could be problems with the plant count. We've also heard concerns about uh, what the implications could be for doctors who uh, have patients who require more than that recommended quantity. Um, and I know that some people have slightly varying versions of history and how 6032 came into being, and we're all entitled to those opinions. Um, but uh, as much as we can, I encourage the panel members to focus on how do we get to the next step? We're in the messy middle. There's absolute prohibition where everyone gets arrested. There is a model that we imagine where adults who smoke marijuana responsibly are not treated as criminals, they can access it, and that people who need medicine have access to the medicine they need. And we're in the middle, so how do we keep this ball moving the direction that we want to go? Uh, and we'll start with Dennis. One of the things that I'm involved in is trying to establish a medical cannabis liaison with the state of Washington. Now, I have heard uh, some disparaging comments about our gov governor and various other legislators. I will tell you from my personal experience, from speaking with them face to face in person, they are behind us. What happens is that the, they get threatened by law enforcement groups, by industrial groups, you know, the big money, finance, etc. They, they want to get reelected so they can try to implement the changes that they want to see, and they're willing to. Nah, sort of give them a little slack here and there, but it's at our expense. So my whole belief is that by establishing and opening lines of communication with law enforcement, with medical groups, the medical professionals, and the patient groups, that then we patients will be able to speak to the people who are in charge of legislating our laws without fear and without threat and be able to explain to them the practical sides of being a medical cannabis patient because they simply don't understand. So that's where I'm coming from. I don't believe that attacking the governor, uh, to me that's screwing the pooch, you know. <laughs> she really is on our side. We don't want the, her opponent in there. He, he's, when he's questioned about medical cannabis, he doesn't say that he's for medical cannabis or, or changing the marijuana laws at all. Are we talking about Dino 